I'm Steve from This Week with Cars, and this is a 1950 Pontiac Chieftain. This car, of course, was designed by Harley Earl, and is one of the first post-war designs to come from Pontiac. This car features the 249 cubic inch L-head Silver Streak 8-cylinder engine, which is only 10 cubic inch larger than the 6-cylinder, which was also available. I last drove this car in 2015, which is about 7 years ago and I know that the car hasn't run in at least five years. Most of the cars that I feature getting running on my channel have been sitting for a very long period of time, and cars like that should only be tackled by people who really know what they're doing. But there are a lot of cars out there that have been sitting in garages for the same amount of time as this Pontiac has. So today I'd like to show you how to get your car running if it's been sitting in your garage for 10 years or less since it last ran. Let's take a quick look around this car first. One of the first things that people probably notice on this car is this Native American head here. And that does light up when you turn the headlights on. That says Silver Streak 8. These really are beautiful cars. They have a very streamlined look to them. This car is a two-door with front and rear seats. They put a lot of attention on both how the outside and the inside of the cars looked back then. For those who haven't seen one before, this little device right here is able to see the stoplights and you can see the reflection of the color if it's green, yellow, or red because there's a sun visor right above the windshield and that may block the view from being able to see the stoplights and whether it's time to go or not. So this little device shows you what color they are. Look at that beautiful round speaker above the radio there. And then above the glove box it says Pontiac 8. This car does have the hydromatic automatic transmission. This car is not referred to as one of the streamliner designs, but I think it is beautiful nonetheless. Let's take a look under the hood. First thing I notice is the hood release did not come back. So may need to lubricate that, get that to work properly. The battery has been removed, so that's a good place to start. It's not going to do anything without that. You can see the air cleaner's been moved off of the carburetor. I think the first thing I'm going to do is clean up all this battery acid that was left over from the battery going bad when it was in here. You really don't want to let any of this sit around, otherwise it's just going to eat through any metal that it comes in contact with. I'm just going to take a screwdriver and try to knock these bigger chunks loose. Be careful when there's this much spilled battery acid that you don't go ahead and use a wire brush right from the start because it may aerate this, get it all in the air. You really don't want to be breathing this or getting it into your eye. So I'm just gonna make sure that the bulk of it is loose so that it can be vacuumed up. What I have here is a solution of baking soda and hot water. I'm going to take this nasty cable in and dip that in there. And if you could see that, it's just dissolving all of the battery acid off the end of that cable. Let us let that sit in there until it has stopped bubbling. The ground cable looks in good shape, but I'm also going to put that in there, make sure it dissolves off any battery acid that might be on it. It's been over an hour. Let's get these out of here. This one looks like brand new. Pontiac switched to negative ground on their cars in the 40s. 
So this is a negative ground car. The battery bracket has received the same treatment as the cable ends. I've soaked this in water and baking soda in a big container. I'm going to connect the hot side of the battery first. That way if I touch anything while I'm tightening this down, it won't short out. Now I'll take the ground and I'm just gonna to touch it for a second to the battery. Make sure that there isn't any big sparks letting me know that there's probably an electrical issue and I shouldn't have the battery connected, but I'm not seeing anything at all. Let's turn the ignition on, see if anything happens. Okay, you can see the fuel gauge went up and there's no smoke or sparks coming from the car, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna turn it back off. Before you go to start your car, you should check, make sure you have coolant in it. There is some coolant in here, way down there. You can see some evidence that the radiator might be leaking at this point, so I think the coolant level is down right here, and it might be leaking out of the front here. So I'll get this filled back up and then pay attention right here once we do get the car running. That looks better. It's a real tiny dipstick on this big engine. The oil is at the full mark. Sometimes if your engine has been sitting for a really long time or you've actually left the car outside, you may want to pull out all the spark plugs and put a little bit of oil in there. I don't recommend doing that every time because that will cause a lot of aggravation. It will follow your plugs and make it harder to start. And in this case, I'm going to leave the spark plugs in place. Now most old classic cars have mechanical fuel pumps and if I was to try to start this car right now, I'd have to crank it over a lot just to get the fuel pumped from the tank and up to the carburetor. So if your car's been sitting for a long time, it's a good idea to just shoot a little bit of starter fluid or ether down into the carburetor so that it'll get started easier. In this case, I'm going to open the choke so that I can get down into the carburetor and get that starter fluid in there. Alternatively, you could also pour gas down the carburetor. Just make sure you don't put too much in there. The car could backfire out of the carburetor and ignite all the fuel that you put in there. So I'm going to give the car a little shot of starter fluid and we'll try to start it. If it doesn't start, then we'll take a look at the ignition system. Okay, here we go. Ignition on. At the starter. Give it a little bit of throttle. Hearing it trying to start, so it does have ignition. I'm gonna hit it with starter fluid one last time, and if that doesn't work, then we'll take a look at other things. It is difficult to get the car to fire right off the bat when it's been sitting for a long time, so this isn't unusual that it won't start, but if you can't get it started after a couple tries, there's probably something more wrong. All right, attempt number two. Ooh, close. Okay, it's not gonna start. Let's take a look at the ignition system. With your car just sitting around, your ignition system is one of the first things that's going to go bad. It doesn't look the best. You can see there's a lot of corrosion on those pins. The rotor itself looks in very good shape. So I'm gonna take my Dremel tool with a wire wheel and I'm going to clean up the inside of the distributor cap. I like to get the car running with what it's got, just taking notes of what I might wanna play, such as a new distributor cap on this car. If you wait for each single part to arrive, you may never get the car running. That would take a lot of time and you may not get back to it. We are here, so let's take a look at the points as well. They're located right here. From the distance away that I am, the points appear to be in good shape. What we can do is crank the engine over and then watch for a spark here, and then we'll know if these are working or not. What I saw is that the points were working. These were opening and shutting, and you saw sparks happening, but it wasn't consistent. And that's what we were seeing when we were trying to start the car. It would fire, but it wouldn't fire all the time and keep the engine running. 
So I'm going to take my points file and open up the points and clean both sides of the contacts. That was a lot better. I'm going to put everything back together and we'll try to fire the engine again. I'll give it a little shot of starter fluid again. Is it gonna keep running? Ah. So close. You can see we were building up oil pressure. But it sounds like it's only running on the starter fluid, so we may not have fuel yet. Let's go take a look at that and see if there are any issues. The fuel comes from the fuel pump up to the carb on this line right here. So I'm going to take this off and see if we have any fuel up here yet. There's absolutely no fuel coming out of the end of this pipe. So the fuel pump either doesn't run or it needs primed. So let's try priming it first. This hose right here is connected up to one of my fuel drip tanks. So I'm just going to connect that up, turn the fuel on, and fill this line full of gasoline, which I hope will in turn prime the pump. Now I have this line full of fuel. I'm going to crank the engine over and see if any fuel squirts out here. Nothing came out, so we definitely have a problem with the fuel pump. Here's the fuel pump. The fuel comes from the fuel tank through this hose here, into this filter, and then into the pump. This pump not only pumps fuel, but it also creates a vacuum. And this upper portion is the vacuum pump that runs the vacuum controlled wipers. I'm going to undo this hose that runs into the fuel pump and connect up my fuel supply so that we can see if the pump works. Notice there was no fuel that came out. So I'll connect this hose, which is a known good fuel source. Turn the fuel on. I can hear it filling up the pump. Ooh. And all that fuel just ran out of the pump. With the fuel running right out of the pump, now we know we need to take this off. Okay, now let's get the pump over on the bench and take a look at what's wrong. I have the fuel pump upside down right now because the fuel portion was on the bottom. I'm going to take all these screws out and separate this so that we can see the workings of it. Well, it's not full of all kinds of crud in here. You can see that the pump should be working. This diaphragm's not torn. It's very thick. It's in very good shape. Let's take this off and take a look in here. This bolt was not very tight, so I wonder if this is the cause of the leak. Oh, look at that. The seal has shrunk. So that would obviously cause a very big fuel leak right there. These are probably not readily available. So I'm gonna make a new one out of cork. I already had some cork circles, so I'm going to trace this out. I can use one of these old pieces to tell how thick it needs to be. There we go. Now this bolt has a sealing washer right here. So I need to make sure that that is tight enough that the bolt squashes down that washer and creates a seal. Now I'll put these back together. Looks like the spacing is symmetrical. So you have to be careful about how you clock this, putting it back together. I'm going to get two of these started Hold this together against that spring. But I'm not going to tighten them completely until I have them all started. I'm 
The pump should be ready to put back in the car now, but I'm going to test it first before I do that. Hook up the fuel here. I'm gonna plug this in with my thumb. I'll turn on the fuel. All right, the fuel's on. I don't see anything leaking this time. Take my thumb off. You can hear the fuel going into the pump there. Okay, there it is. And it is not leaking. It's ready to go back in the car. The fuel pump is connected back at the carburetor. And I'm not going to connect the fuel tank just yet. I'm going to connect the end of my drip tank to the inlet of the fuel pump. Let's get the car running, make sure that the fuel pump is working, make sure that the engine works properly before we have to deal with maybe some potential problems with the fuel tank as well. I know that I have fuel at the carburetor now because I can hear it filling up just from the gravity feed from the tank. But I'm gonna give it a little hit of starter fluid just to get it going. Okay, it looks like the carburetor is leaking now. I'm gonna shut the fuel off, but we'll start it. Let's see if the car runs now. sounds great we've cleaned off the valves and the engine runs well now it could be that the car has sat for so long that the float valve was stuck sometimes if you just let the car run for a little bit that will work itself out let's hope that's the case this time I'm going to turn the fuel back on and we'll test that Okay, could you see that? We could see that the pump was working, but it was absolutely shooting fuel out the overflows every time that the pump pumped. I'm going to disconnect my fuel bottle and connect the fuel tank back up. Right now I'm letting the car run with the fuel line from the fuel tank hooked up. A couple things are gonna happen here. Either the carb is going to run out of fuel because there is no fuel coming from the fuel tank, or the pump is going to start pumping fuel and it's going to start spraying out of the overflows again. Or, or the pump is going to pump the fuel from the tank, the valves are going to start working properly in the carburetor, and the car won't have any issues at all. So I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. seems like everything's working. I would have thought that the car would have died by now. It could have been that the pressure caused by the gravity of the fuel in my fuel bottle combined with the pressure created by the pump may have been too much for the valves and the carburetor. And now that we're running only on the pressure created by the fuel pump, everything looks to be fine. I think it's time to take it for a test drive and see how it runs. All right, let's give this a go. Hope I don't need to call a tow truck to bring me back. I 
engine sounds good. Make sure that the brakes hold me against the engine. I'm just gonna stay on the brakes and rev it up a little bit. Make sure that the brakes hold, they do. If your car has been sitting for a long time, you always wanna make sure that your brakes are working before you go out on the road. This one seems to be doing just fine. I should have cleaned the windshields before I left. You can really see the dust on there with us going into the sun. Everything seems to be working so far, including the heater. It's getting quite hot in here. appears to be working. The engine's coming up to temp. It's almost up to 180 now. There's a lot more traffic than usual in my town today because there's a big college football game going on. But the car seems to be running great. It's driving straight. The engine sounds good. Everything on the gauges looks good. have it what I thought was going to be a quick video on getting a car that hasn't been parked for that long running again turned out to be a much bigger task so I think the moral of the story is get your car out and drive it often don't let it sit for too long and if you run into something simple that's keeping you from getting it on the road go get that fixed don't let it turn into a much larger problem if you want to see more videos like this comment below and click subscribe I know it's going to be asked for, so here's what the hood emblem looks like lit up.